Thank you very much indeed, Anton. Thank you, Michael, for setting the scene uh, for this Congress so expertly. And forgive me if I take the opportunity at the outset to say a heartfelt thank you to the pupils uh, who have performed for us so wonderfully just a few moments ago. I, I'm not sure if they're still with us, but I want to take the opportunity as First Minister to say just how proud I was sitting there listening to pupils who are such great ambassadors for the city of Glasgow and for the nation of Scotland. So thank you to them very much indeed. You know, one of the things that we are determined to do here in Scotland is learn from evidence and analysis from right around the world. So we are really, really delighted to host this year's International Congress on School Effectiveness and Improvement. And I'm delighted to welcome delegates from around 50 countries from all over the world. Uh, let me extend a very genuine and a very heartfelt and a very warm welcome to all of you to Scotland and to my home city of Glasgow. Unfortunately, I cannot guarantee for you uh, warm weather, but I can guarantee for you a very, very warm welcome, uh, and I can guarantee warm hospitality. Uh, regardless of what we might have heard, heard at the outset of proceedings this afternoon, whiskey will not be in short supply. I would encourage you to take advantage of Scottish hospitality, including our wonderful uh, whisky, but caution you to do so in moderation because uh, otherwise you might not feel fit to take part in the important discussions that lie ahead of you. One reason that we are so pleased to host this year's conference is that the key theme of it, connecting schools, teachers and systems, is at the very heart of what we are looking to achieve here in Scotland. We're doing a lot of work, which I'll go on to talk about, to ensure that our systems for improving education help individual pupils, teachers and schools to succeed. As many of you will know, Scotland has a long and a very proud tradition of excellence in education. During the 17th and 18th centuries, we pioneered the idea of universal school education. And ever since then, a commitment to education has been part of our national story, part of our very sense of ourselves. And that, in my view, is exactly as it should be. An excellent education is a right that we owe to every single young person in our country. So what we are seeking to do now in Scotland is ensure that excellence in education is a continuing and fundamental part of our national life. We want to make sure that excellent education is as central to our nation's success in the future as it has been in our past. And today marks a very important milestone in that ongoing process of improvement. We're publishing today a new national improvement framework for education which, amongst other things, will provide clear and consistent information for parents, teachers, local and national government about performance in education, both about the progress of individual young people and the performance of the system as a whole. And what I want to do this afternoon is place this new development in context. I'll set out the key recent achievements of Scottish education and I'll explain why this new improvement framework is central to our twin aims of excellence and equity. Uh, why I believe that it will help us to raise educational attainment for everyone, but also contribute to closing the attainment gap between children in the most affluent parts of our country and those in our most deprived areas. Just under one month ago, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development published a study of Scotland's education system. And it found that academic achievement in Scottish schools is above the international average. It found that attainment is improving, that our schools are inclusive, and that our children have positive attitudes towards school. Now, these findings weren't a huge surprise. 
In recent years, standards have consistently improved. At last summer, for example, young people in Scotland gained a record number of passes at higher and advanced higher. And the successes haven't just been about higher examinations. More people received Scottish qualification awards, national certificates and national progression awards, qualifications that relate to wider skills for life and work, for example, in childcare and construction, leadership and personal finance. We're providing a more flexible school environment with more qualifications, providing a wider variety of routes into work for young people. And partly as a result of that, school leaver destinations are now the best on record, the best that we have ever seen in Scotland. Of the students who left school in 2014, more than nine out of 10 of them were in employment, education or training nine months after they left school. And all of that, of course, is because of the outstanding work of teachers, head teachers, children and parents right across our country. And of course, all of this has happened during a time of significant change in Scottish education. In recent years, as many of you will be aware of, we've introduced a new curriculum, a curriculum for excellence. It gives teachers more flexibility, it provides a broader education for our young people, and it sets higher standards for achievement than ever before. And the OECD made clear that these changes have delivered improvements, but they also made clear that more needs to be done to maximise the impact of these changes. So now, based very firmly on the OECD's recommendations, we're working to improve Curriculum for Excellence further. We'll take forward a new phase of work on Curriculum for Excellence to make the framework simpler for teachers and for parents and carers. Uh, the OECD report also confirmed two interrelated areas where we have the potential to do much better. It pointed out the importance of closing the attainment gap in Scotland's schools and also the need for more consistent information for parents, for teachers, for local authorities and indeed for national government. And I want to speak in some detail about these today. And in doing so, I'm very, very well aware that the basic issues that Scotland is dealing with in education are ones which are familiar to education systems right around the world. In particular, most countries face the issue of an attainment gap. Scotland is not unique in this. Uh, the attainment gap, of course, is that likelihood that children from affluent areas will do better than children from more deprived areas. Now, much of what we need to do to address that gap goes far beyond the school education system. That's one reason why in Scotland our work to relieve poverty, to mitigate UK government welfare cuts and to improve early years education and childcare are so important. We need to improve the collaboration between all services which support children. But school education and how school education relates to people's home and family circumstances is hugely important. Uh, we know that last year, almost four in 10 students from the most deprived areas of Scotland left school with at least one higher qualification or equivalent. Now, that's almost twice as many as did so in 2008. In other words, progress is being made. But when we look at students from our most affluent areas, what we see is that the figure wasn't four out of 10, it was eight out of 10 leaving school with at least one higher qualification or equivalent. In other words, when it comes to hires or equivalent qualifications, school leavers from the most deprived 20% of areas in Scotland, notwithstanding the improvement we've seen, will still do half as well, half as well as school leavers from our most affluent areas. Now that's simply not acceptable. Nobody can be comfortable living in a country, any country, where different levels of wealth create such a significant gap in attainment levels and therefore the life chances of so many children. It's bad for the children most directly affected, but also, in my view, impoverishes all of us as a society. It means that far too many people are unable to realise their full potential and to fully contribute their talents, their ideas and their energies to the betterment of society. So that's why 
I see closing the attainment gap as a defining challenge over the next few years for the government I lead and for our society as a whole. Uh, we've already said that all children born in Scotland uh, sh now should have an equal chance of attending university or indeed of pursuing any other training, education or career of their choice. And closing the attainment gap earlier in the education system is an essential part of making sure that that can become a reality, of ensuring that people's life chances are driven by their aptitudes and by their hard work, not by their circumstances or their background. And that's why the Scottish Government is taking concerted action now. Our overall aim is to raise standards everywhere, but to raise them most quickly in the areas where we most need to see improvement. We've established a £100 million Attainment Scotland Fund, which provides targeted support to schools and local authorities in our most deprived areas. Most of that extra funding is being used to recruit more staff, teachers, classroom assistants, learning support specialists, or family link workers. As a result, schools will be able to provide even better support for children and parents. And let's be in no doubt, it is what happens in schools across our country that will have the biggest impact on the standards of education. That's why over the next few months, we'll set out our thinking on how to further empower schools and teachers to be the drivers of the improvement we want to see. Uh, we've also recruited attainment advisors to work with schools across the country. These initiatives run alongside our Raising Attainment for All programme, an initiative which has encouraged more than 200 schools across Scotland to try out different ideas and approaches to raising attainment and then to share their experience of what has worked. And that goes alongside a systematic effort to invest in our teaching profession. Our teachers are an enduring strength of Scotland's education system. That's why the OECD highlighted uh, the point that Scotland has an historic high regard for learning, education and teachers and the trust it invests in teachers' professional judgment is an admirable counterbalance to the trends in many systems. In fact, a faith in the expertise and judgment of teachers lies at the very heart of Curriculum for Excellence and it lies at the heart of this new improvement framework. So we're determined to support teachers as effectively as possible. We've already established a Scottish College for Educational Leadership and encouraged more classroom teachers to take master's qualifications. We've also recently started a new qualification for headship. That new qualification will be mandatory for new head teachers from the summer of 2019 onwards. Uh, we're investing in teachers and in head teachers because we know and believe fundamentally that their expertise is at the heart of everything that we're trying to achieve. And all of this action to close the attainment gap leads on to another issue, that of assessment and evidence. After all, we can only drive rapid and significant improvement if we first know in detail what the extent of the attainment gap is and then understand whether or not what we're doing is working to close that gap. At the moment, nearly all of the 32 local authority areas across Scotland conduct some form of standardised assessment to monitor children's progress. However, these assessments aren't conducted on a consistent basis, so they don't provide us uh, with a good basis for seeing the national picture or for making accurate comparisons. And we don't currently publish information about children's progress in primary or in early secondary school. Instead, for the purposes of national information, we only assess progress on literacy and numeracy through an annual sample-based survey, which is conducted at ages 8, 11 and 13. Now, that survey provides some data on national performance, but it doesn't provide diagnostic information for teachers that they can use in the classroom, nor does the sample size provide sufficient evidence for detailed evaluation. As a result, as Audit Scotland reported last year, there's currently a lack of information about overall performance at both a national and a local level. And that's particularly true for children in primary school and in the first three years of secondary school. Indeed, as the OECD found, we don't currently have sufficient evidence to identify areas of strength 
or issues or local areas where intervention might be desirable. So that's why today, after three months of extensive consultation, we're launching this new national improvement framework for Scottish education. It is based on four key priorities for education, raising attainment, closing the attainment gap, improving health and well-being, and improving employability. It sets out measures for school improvement, school leadership, supporting teachers, and engaging parents. As I said earlier on, teacher judgment lies at the heart of the system. Teachers will continue to assess the progress of children using a range of approaches. There will be no narrowing of the curriculum and no teaching to the test. However, from 2017, following pilots that we'll conduct later this year, uh, teacher judgment will be informed by a system of new national standardised assessment at primaries one, four and seven, and in the third year of secondary school, which will help teachers and indeed parents make better, more objective and more consistent judgments about children's progress towards the different curriculum levels. Information on the percentage of children achieving curriculum levels in literacy and numeracy at P1, 4, 7 and third year at secondary will for the first time be collected and published nationally each year, broken down by local authority and school, to give us a clear and consistent picture of how children and young people are progressing in their learning. It will also give us a clear picture at different ages and stages of exactly what the attainment gap is and it will then allow us to measure our progress in closing that gap. And in doing this, we are seeking to create a system which strikes the right balance between supporting the development of individual children and providing information and accountability about national and local performance. For individual children, it means they can be supported more effectively. For parents, it will mean clear, meaningful information on their child's progress consistently presented no matter where they are in the country. For teachers, local authorities and community planning partnerships, it means better data for identifying areas of improvement. And for the Scottish Government, it will very importantly mean we have clear information to guide our national policy. The OECD in its report highlighted that Scotland has, and I'm quoting here, Scotland has the opportunity to lead the world in developing an innovative national assessment, evaluation and improvement framework. That's exactly what we are seeking to do. We want to lead the way in delivering a framework based on a balanced range of measures, one that gives a full picture of performance, but without causing perverse incentives. We know that if we succeed in that, then we're much more likely to succeed in those twin aims of raising standards for everyone and closing the attainment gap. The information that we'll gather will allow us over the next few years to set clear, precise and meaningful milestones on the road to closing the attainment gap. But I want to be clear today that my personal uh, determination is that we're able to see and demonstrate progress on both excellence and equity by the end of our next parliamentary term, which is five years from now. And as a country, I believe that we should all aspire uh, to achieving a substantial progress towards the complete elimination of the attainment gap within the next decade. Um, in short, I want Scotland to have a truly excellent education system for all of our young people. As I said at the outset, the OECD report says that our educational standards are above international averages. That's good, but I want us to aspire not to being just above average, but to be genuinely world leading in the education system that we have. In achieving that, we need to do all of the things that I've outlined today, but we know that we also need to learn from good practice from right around the world. Uh, that indeed is why we invited the OECD to carry out their review. It's why in the last 12 months I visited successful schools in New York and London uh, to learn lessons from good practice elsewhere. And it's why we see this Congress and the opportunity it provides to share experiences and learning as such a wonderful opportunity for us here in Scotland. So it is a real pleasure and a real privilege to host you all this week. Uh, I hope that you have a fantastic time here in Scotland. I, I hope that the rain stays off for at least some 
of the time you will spend here with us. Um, I hope that you have, and I'm sure that you will have, a very productive few days of discussions. Uh, I hope that we can build enduring relationships this week that will allow us to share and learn from each other on an ongoing basis. And I hope that the insights and ideas generated will bring benefits to children here in Scotland, uh, but also to children right around the world. Thank you very much indeed for listening and please enjoy your discussions.